Paul. Hi, my name is Rich Paul. I represent the 420 Foundation, which put on the uh, civil disobedience rallies in the town square in Keene, New Hampshire. And we've also come out and smoked out here on your lawn, so if that irritated anybody, sorry. Um, the, uh, there are a number of reasons that marijuana should be legalized. The first goes back all the way to the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain inalienable rights, that amongst these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that it is to protect those rights that governments are instituted among men. Now, if I believe that I can pursue happiness by smoking pot, if that is how I believe I will find happiness, that is my right. And it is your responsibility as representatives of my government to protect my liberty to pursue that right. That's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Very important thing. There have been some, there's been some discussion about the difficulty of identifying whether a driver has been smoking pot. There's a very important reason for that. A driver who has been smoking pot does not fall out of his automobile when you open the door. He gets out of his automobile and he walks. <laughs> when a man who has been smoking pot tries to walk a straight line, he walks a straight line. When a man who's been drinking tries to walk a straight line, he falls on his face or beats his wife, depending on his mood. That doesn't happen with marijuana. Um, right now, I'm under indictment for four counts of delivering a quarter pound of marijuana, okay, each the size of or the weight of a stick of butter. But yet, what I am facing for that is 56 years in prison. And what's that, what that is going to cost, the geniuses who put me there, is almost $2 million at $35,000 a year. Now, I may not be worth much out on the street, but I'm sure it's not worth more than negative $2 million as a member of society. I believe. I mean, you all might disagree. You know, that's your right. Um, there's been some discussion that 25% of high school kids smoke pot. Do any of you think it would be a better world if 25% of high school kids were in prison? Anybody? No, I didn't think so. I don't think it would be a better world with 25% of high school kids in prison either. Marijuana is not going to go away any more than alcohol went away during Prohibition. What use of, al of marijuana is not going to go away if Prohibition of marijuana is repealed, just like use of alcohol did not go away when Prohibition of marijuana was, or when Prohibition of alcohol was repealed. But some good things happened after repeal of, of uh, Prohibition. For example, there hasn't been a single incident where an executive at Jack Daniels has had an executive at Seagram whacked. It doesn't happen. They don't whack each other. There's an important reason for this. When large amounts of money, and I will tell you that I used to sell pot in Michigan when I was in high school, and the statute of limitations is long over, so I can talk about it. Um, <laughs> and I can tell you that there's a lot of money involved. And when somebody robs you, when somebody beats you, when somebody breaks into your house, you have two choices. You either take it and say, ah, oh, that's the breaks of the game, or you do violence against that person. Violence. Now, that's not necessary in the alcohol business, because if you rob a liquor store, they're going to call the police. Okay. If you break into Seagram's and take their alcohol, they're going to call the police, just like anybody else. That's why people in the drug business kill each other, and people in the alcohol business do not. We, we appreciate your enthusiasm, but just, it's a little distracting when you pound the table. I've got a loud voice. Uh, so I, I apologize. Um, 
Uh, I think that's, I, I didn't actually come with prepared, prepared remarks today. I think that's probably all I've got. But if you people think the world will be a better place if the state of New Hampshire is $2 million a quarter and I'm sitting in jail, that's your choice. I respectfully disagree. Are we going to feel? Yeah, I'm just curious. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just curious, sir. When you talked about your, I guess, the independent rights or whatever you have, mm -hmm. I didn't see anywhere in your website that you have a right to have drugs and get rowdy and, and drink and all that in your rights of, of protecting people. So I didn't see that in there. Well, they're not that specific. They say the right to pursue happiness. Now, if I pursue happiness by smoking pot, that's the pursuit of happiness. And according to the Declaration of Independence, it is your responsibility to leave me at liberty to pursue happiness. Now, I might be pursuing happiness in the wrong way. I might be pursuing happiness in a way that will never, ever get me happiness. But that's okay, because I don't have a right to happiness. I have a right to pursue happiness in my own way, according to my own conscience. Okay. Other questions? Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you. Uh, Susan McCown?